Hello, everyone, and welcome to On to the Next Quarter. For any newcomers or returners, I am your host, Shweta Lumba. If you've been following along, you know that this podcast is all about embracing the unknown, finding your purpose, and showing up as your authentic self through all phases of life. This episode is really special to me because it shows how I recently, once again, jumped into the unknown. About three years ago, I decided to move from the West Coast to the Big Apple to complete my master's at NYU in biotechnology and entrepreneurship, to then completely leaving the world of sciences behind and starting this podcast. I've now begun a new journey of learning the art of coffee by becoming a barista in the heart of New York City. And becoming a barista was always like this random desire that I've had. And one day I was just like, you know, if not now, then when? But I never would have imagined that that journey would have led me to meeting some of the most greatest human beings ever. If you know me, you know that I am not a morning person at all, but I genuinely wake up so excited every single day to go to my 6 a.m. shift just to meet our amazing customers who are always showing us so much love and, of course, to be with my awesome ride or die team, Irene, Crystal, Raina, CJ, and Elizabeth. I love you guys so much and my time as a barista has led me to this episode so I really hope that you guys enjoy it and I'm excited for the possibility of maybe creating this into a cool little series where I get to introduce you all to all of the talented people that I get to meet through my job as a barista. And like always, please like, share, subscribe to my channel, all of that good stuff. It would really mean the world to me. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. On to the next quarter. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of On to the Next Quarter, where I bring to you influential individuals who have impacted my life and I hope can impact yours as well. Today, I would like to introduce you to somebody who is as warm, as comforting, and as refreshing as your perfect morning cup of coffee, Miss Elizabeth Rico, a South American immigrant who is originally from Venezuela. About six years ago, Elizabeth took a jump into the unknown and decided to move to New York City, not knowing the opportunities that it would hold for her. Soon after, she became a certified barista and quickly moved her way up to becoming district manager of the French-American company Le Café Coffee. She now manages seven of their stores and assists in the operations for the entire company which includes 16 stores and is still growing. She also has her bachelor's in marketing and a diploma in strategic marketing. Whenever Ellie is at work, she literally lights up the entire room and makes anyone who walks through the door feel so, so, so special. And I am really excited to have you on the show oh here God. today. Such and an intro. I feel the love. Oh, <laughs> yay, yay. I'm glad you should because I felt the love when I first met you. And I was very nervous um, about, you know, coming into a whole new environment. But you made me feel so welcomed and so loved. And I'm super appreciative of that. I actually remember that day like if it was yesterday and it's been already a hot minute, right? We've been together. <laughs> yeah, it's been like two months-ish. Yeah, yeah. I, I really, I, I'm so glad I met you and this is great. I'm so honored to be in your podcast. Yay, I'm so excited. <laughs> so a little bit of a backstory on how me and Ellie met. So about like two-ish months ago, yeah, two-ish months ago, I had this urge, actually I've had this urge for like a couple years now of wanting to 
be a barista, wanting to learn how to be one of the greatest baristas, make good coffee and serve good coffee. But I was just always kind of scared to do it because the only experience with coffee I had was drinking it. And so yeah. I was like, oh, I don't know. It was like something I knew I wanted to do, step outside of my comfort zone. We all have like that random thing we want to learn, like maybe a singing class or going to a dance class or something. But for me, it was learning how to make coffee. And so I was like, you know what? I'm about to turn 27 soon. If I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? And I've already missed out on like so many opportunities. So I was like, this is the best time to do it. So one day I decide to go get coffee from this cute little shop that opened up across my apartment. And I go in there and I'm like, you know what? Like, this is such a beautiful shop. I loved the workers. The environment was so nice. I was like, let me just shoot my shot and ask if they're hiring. And they were. And the girl at the register was like, oh, yeah. Like, she whispered, like, our manager is over here. Just go talk to her. I was like, are you sure? And she was like, yeah, yeah. She's encouraging me. She's like, walk over. Yeah. Just ask her. And I was like, okay. And so like, and that was you. Yes. And I asked you and you were just so nice. And I was scared to be like, oh, I have no experience because I saw everyone doing the latte art and stuff. I was like, dude, that there's looks, no, that yeah. looks hard. <laughs> yeah. I was like, there's no way they're hiring me. But instead you were like, no worries. We'll teach you. Like we love teaching people who really want to learn. And it has been the best experience of my oh life. Oh my God. I'm like, so happy to yeah, hear that. Yeah. It's like, I never thought I would love it as, as much as I do. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. To thank you for showing up randomly to our coffee shop and asking <laughs> for a job. <laughs> of course. So let's jump right in. I was wondering what coffee means to you. What coffee means to me? Wow, I think um, it has been such a journey. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so funny because I didn't used to like coffee. Oh, really? Um, there was a point in my life where, well, all South Americans, right? We start drinking coffee very early. Mm -hmm. So I can remember being nine years old and you already get in like your arepa with a cup of coffee. Uh -huh. It's very light, but it still has coffee in it. Yeah. So you get used to it very, very um, early mm -hmm. age. So, but there was a point where I was like going to college and I just, my morning coffee, I didn't want it, give it to someone else. Like, and now I, I will always have it. Mm -hmm. It was mine because they would, they would split the coffee, but it was like, no, I don't want it. Like someone else can have it. Mm -hmm. So, and then someone very special to me, which was, my high school sweetheart mom uh -huh. we had a very long relationship so she became super meaningful to me and to my life she formed me kind of mm. um in in those years and she was always like just try it but just try it just try it just have a little bit it's like already it's already there for you yeah. i was like okay let me try it i started to love it oh yeah and then after i finished um my, you know, I, I graduated, I got my bachelor's, I got my diploma. I was like, okay, I feel like I need another craft in life that it's not necessarily, you know, marketing and like strategic mm. marketing. Um, I need another craft to go through life, mm. right? So let me just go to coffee school. And I went to coffee oh. school in my country, which I'm really proud of saying that out loud because our country has great soil for coffee, has mm -hmm. a lot of people that cares a lot about the crops, about, um, you know, having their, their own and having their own business in the country, is, which is small and they carry on with such love and passion. Um, so I went to coffee school and then I just, when I came to New York, it was like, okay, let's make a career out of this. And mm. it just really changed my whole course, totally. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So was it uh, your high school sweetheart's mom that like kind of inspired that feeling or wanting to go to coffee 100%. school? A hundred percent. Well, yeah, going to coffee school was more like, OK, let me make a craft out of this mm -hmm. now that I'm enjoying it. And, you know, I feel like I I want to learn something else that it's not necessarily a corporate job. Yeah, I want to learn something that was in the service industry. I've been working since very early age. Like mm -hmm. my dad used to have this job in a catering company. 
So, you know, I used to bake cookies, make prep, make sandwiches, like charcuterie boards, stuff like that. Yeah. So um, I already knew the service industry from mm -hmm. uh, a young age. But now this was more like, okay, this is mine. Because this yeah. is not something I was doing for someone else. Like, okay, this is um, what we have to do for today. And I participate. This is more like, okay, this is my own. I want to learn this. I want to do this craft myself, like, as a, as a choice. Wow. I didn't even know, like, that existed. Like, coffee I know. School. Everyone tells me, you went to coffee school? Is wow. that a thing? I'm like, yes, I went to coffee school. And it was, I want to say I did it for a total of, I think it was um, two, three months. Okay. Because you go through all the... So it's like um, they teach you from the bean, mm -hmm. where it's coming from, how to roast it, why is coffee green in the, in the previous stage, how does it turn into what we know as coffee? Because yeah. everyone thinks coffee is brown. No. Yeah, Wait, exactly. there is like this whole process of like the roasting. Um, where are the best soils? All of this, it's like a whole deal. Yeah. If you really want to dive in, it's very rich content. Yeah, yeah. It's an art. It's an art. It's an art. Like, since I started, it has become... Like, drinking coffee was good, but now making it and, like, experiencing what it is from start to finish is is like become a passion it's a whole experience you appreciate it so much more from like and i started listening to a podcast about coffee like just random things and you I learn know. so many amazing things about where it comes from the richness of the culture how it brings people together and i'm just like, don't wow. you feel a type of way when you make that beautiful cup of coffee and yeah. then they just put the sugar like and you're I like oh, my heart yeah, it I took know. me it took me so long to do that oh my god i know <clears throat> wow that's crazy yeah so you moved to new york and did you know like okay i want to make this a career what made you pick this versus using your marketing degree in a typical corporate job because what you are doing now also requires marketing in a in a very i would say everyday talking to people type yeah. of way in a very different way but a very useful way but it's not like what people would expect a typical marketing job to look like yeah. so i was wondering what made you pick this versus that so what happened was, I mean, being completely honest, um, this was more of my, okay, I am an immigrant going to another country. Definitely this will be like the stepping stone, right? Because yeah. you don't come and immediately find a corporate job. So, you know, you have to maybe go back to college, do your, um, how do you call it? So you have to like, you know, do certain subjects again. Yeah. You have to validate what you saw over there yeah. to what you're seeing over here. So um, I knew that there was, I needed to do something first before I did whatever I, I intended to do with my degree and why mm -hmm. I went to college for. So it was kind of a stepping stone for me, but I'm proud to say that it was something I chose. Mm -hmm. um, and it felt just like you know, picking the career that you're going to work for. Mm. And it turned that out beautifully because I took it so seriously that I'm making an actual career. And also with the, um, I, I still think about all this stuff I went to college for, like studying the market, studying your customer. Yeah. How do you want the customer to come back? Um, how to make that bond with the customer, yeah. how to um, network, all of these yeah. things I went to college for. And now I'm applying it to what I chose as my second career, yeah. kind of. So it was, but at that particular time, it was more like, okay, I need a stepping stone before I do bigger things because I was just arriving to a new country that was, you know, opening uh, its arms to me but yeah. I knew it was not going to be okay immediately here you go it's like you need to escalate yeah yeah no that totally makes sense and like you were saying like developing a connection and figuring out how customers will come back I saw that firsthand with you when I was working that shift with you 
the other day and i was just like amazed at the way people were so excited to see you oh. they were calling in their friends they're like oh ellie's working today like we gotta <laughs> go get coffee and you knew about their life and they knew about you and it was just such a wholesome it was like a family it was like family is coming together every single customer i was like wow like you literally lit up their eyes they were so excited oh to see God. you and i was like this is this is something different than just coffee like i've been to plenty of coffee shops because i love coffee and i would go to once over and over again but i never felt like home over there but over here you guys have developed such a such a community i know it's such a community and it's like people just keep coming back and again and again and you get to learn about their life they get to learn about you and it's just like this connection with people i thought i would i would never have i know and it's very genuine it's very yeah. real because also um and particularly the rockefeller it holds such a dear space in my heart because these are people that there was a point during COVID i was just working there by myself imagine and now how many how many do we have in the team like at least six people because yeah. it's really busy so um but there was a point where it was just me and i would see these persons every day every day every day to the point that i know about their life about their families and and it's so genuine and the connection is so real that i can't be a good amount of time without going to the rockefeller to do a shift I happen to just stop by and I don't see anyone. I just go right in, boom, 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 boom. I leave. Um, but if I go for a shift and I see all these faces, I can just pick up where I left off. Yeah. That's how genuine it is and how meaningful that connection is because that I just, it's beyond the point of selling you the cup of coffee. Yeah. You come back because there is there is something behind that. It's just not the, the transactional value. It's okay, I created a bond with this person and it's genuine it's yeah. it's long lasting whether they come for coffee or not yeah exactly and i feel like a lot of them stay or like linger to keep talking with us you I know, know. they, they want to catch up they want to tell us about this and that and they bring us cute little gifts and I presents know. and i'm like wow what is this like i love it it's and everyone's just yeah, I feel like you guys have created an environment that attracts that same type of frequency and those same type of people that reciprocate that, which is which is not something I see everywhere. Definitely. I mean, it's an energy thing, right? Because yeah. it's reciprocated. Yeah. That, that's all that is. And I feel like everyone in the team is so special. They have all so many different skills, so many different, um, also different personalities. I want to say you yeah. all have these things in common, yeah. but you're also very different from each yeah. other. But there's something about it that it complements so well. And look, when people come, they want to see a bit of all of you. It's not yeah. just like, oh, I'm here for whoever. Yeah. It's like, I'm here to catch up with everyone. Like, yeah. and, and I love when the customers, like for example, right now with the holidays, when mm -hmm. they give out presents, they think about the whole team yeah. there. It's, it's really a, a really beautiful thing, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what was that journey like from starting off as a barista to now moving up to becoming a manager in you know, just like less than six years. Yeah. So I think I always wanted more. Like, it's very important that um, I want to say you you know where you want to be. And knowing that things don't happen immediately, I feel like I was patient enough where I put really hard work into the company. Uh, look, this company is not mine, but I love it as if it was my own. Mm. I love um my bosses i think they are great uh persons and i not only say that oh because i like my job i genuinely feel like they are very hard working i feel the support from them mm. when i'm working it's not like okay we have this situation going on it's like okay fix this no it's like we're always together solving things mm. i felt that since the beginning um especially with my my I, I want to say he's my operational um, boss, Khalil. Um, he is very hands-on with everything, and I feel the support all the time. 
And I always knew that, okay, I want to do more for them. And I feel like it's reciprocated as mm -hmm. well. So <clears throat> um, I started as a barista. I, I started to, you know, I always worked hard so that reflected on them giving me more responsibilities that I, of course, wanted. I always asked for more and more. And at one point, I felt like we were growing enough to the point that I can help my boss in different ways than just being on the shift. And at this point, I I still do shifts every now and then, but it's like there is so much going on and I support on every level that I feel very included. I feel very present in everything that we do. And it has it has been a journey that I really appreciate because when you are a manager, but you do the, you know, when you know how to run the bar and mm -hmm. then you're also a manager, you are covered in all levels. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's important that you know the side works, that you know how to wear different hats on the daily basis, yeah. because you are going to have to. Some days you have to troubleshoot, and that means that you have to step down or step up. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you can diverse, diversify yourself in, in whatever area you are needed, mm -hmm. it's, it's a skill. Yeah. And, and I feel like, I feel very grateful that they gave me the chance to participate in every level and to and to trust me enough that I can do it. Yeah, yeah. And like you were saying, aside from just wearing the different hats, I feel like because you started, you know, as a barista and mo moved your way up, you are more empathetic towards people who are first starting off. Like, you understand what that's like. And I think... I was like, I was scared, but like I had two first impressions of you. The first one was when I first met you that day and you were like, oh, yeah. like, you know, it's okay. We'll teach you. And the second one was when I came in for training for the first time yeah. and you were like, <clears throat> mistakes happen. That's how you're going to yes. learn. And I was like, wow, what is this place? Like, oh you know, God. usually I was afraid like, oh, what if I spill a cup of coffee? Like there was so many things to learn. I was like, this is really overwhelming. And then both you and CJ, you guys were like, it's okay. It's normal. Like if you did it, like everyone else did it too. That means that you're doing it right. You're going to learn. And that's the only way it's going to happen. And so it made me feel so much more comfortable. And like, it made me feel like, okay, this is not somebody who is going to make me feel down or is going to be like, oh, I'm superior than you. It was like, no, we're all on the same playing field. We're going to teach you and you're going to be just fine. And I like really appreciate that. I know. Look, I always tell this to the trainees. I say, hey, I'm going to give you a lot of information today. There is a chance you're not going to absorb most of it yeah um and it's okay because the real teacher will be the day that you're brewing coffee and the lid is closed <laughs> and yeah. then they start laughing and it's like it's the baptism everyone has it yeah. you're gonna have it yeah. it's gonna happen to you so i joke around with that but it's the truth i mean it happened to me and that's the only way i learned that i have to check the pot before i brew the coffee yeah it's like um it's very uh okay people is going to tell me this is going to happen but until you live it you don't learn yeah and it applies to a lot of things in life right yeah. so yeah i always give everyone the room to make the mistake and you know the more confined you feel the less you shadow your co-workers yeah you need to have the room and the leash to work alongside them and that they trust you enough that you got this mm -hmm. because otherwise why would we why did we give you the job yeah. right so it's it's a matter of okay i'm i'm trusting that you can get this eventually mm -hmm. and if you don't have the room to sort of move and make the mistake and learn from that you're always like very confined and very shy you're not you don't want to touch anything because maybe i'm gonna mess it up yeah. and it takes longer the, the the learning curve takes a while as mm -hmm. opposed to okay just jump right in we throw you in the pool yeah. see what happens yeah yeah no that, that's true i completely agree i think i think was, we sort of did that to you yeah, right yeah i was like i have no option than to 
operate at the fastest and like learn as quickly as possible. And look at you now. Look at look at those beautiful drinks. Everyone comes Thank to see Shui. <laughs> I see Shui in the bar. I was like, whoa. <laughs> Very you. proud of you. Oh, thank you so much. All thanks to you guys. I always say like you guys have trained me so well and yeah, I love it. I love it. I love With you there. Oh, I think you. you're such a great fit and look, I think the best asset is the asset that wants to learn. Yeah. All in life we can learn. This mm -hmm. craft, I didn't know. I I went somewhere, they helped me out, they taught me the basics, and then I started to make a lot of mistakes at the first job I got, and that's how you move up. Yeah. No, we're, we're not born learning, you know, yeah. everything. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah. So when you first came here, did you <clears throat> have a very big culture shock from, like, back home? I always tell people that it was a shock because I thought it was, like, in the movies. Mm. I thought New York was like in the movies, you know, everything's glam and the yellow cups and and it was a shock when it was like, okay, New York is so tough and people yeah. is mean. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I am so grateful. It has helped me build a lot of character. Um, it's it has. I used to be so like shy and mm. I used to cry for everything I used to crumble at nothing I mm. had I really had no I had no resistance mm. everything felt like oh my god the world is ending kind of so it was such a it has been such a blessing mm. to my persona because mm -hmm. I was able to build character to build my own personality to build my style even yeah. even the way i carry myself today mm -hmm. a lot of moving out of my country and just figuring it out yeah. at this new weird not what i expected place has really built the person i am today so i'm incredibly grateful um and i keep on learning every day and yeah. it has been Honestly, it has been an amazing experience. There, I wouldn't change anything from moving to New York. Yeah. And I feel like I still have, you know, New York is an experience. I don't think I'm going to stay here forever. Yeah. But I still feel like the city has a lot to give me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I feel like the city is always teaching you something. I, I'm learning something new every I single know. day. Yeah. yeah, we both are. Yeah, yeah. So for being somebody who you were very shy, you were maybe not so you know so equipped. fragile yeah, so a, little, fragile. a little fragile so same but what made you then like move here and take that chance because i know a lot of people who are a lot more confident travel around the world do this that and the other and i'm like move out here and they're like no i can't like i can't do I it know. i'm too scared but then i see people who have been <clears throat> in a shell you know maybe aren't as out there that have come here took that chance i don't know what happened same was same thing happened to me i was like you know what like might as well just do it and then you develop thick skin so yeah. i'm wondering like what it was for you so um originally I, i had planned to come with my cousin okay i think it was a life kind of redirection divine redirection or something mm. i um i didn't notice that my passport was about to expire so i couldn't travel and at that time of the trip my cousin came by herself so i ended up staying in the country for an extra year in my country in venezuela and you know in that year so many things happened to me that i feel i generally feel i had to go through that mm. so it was kind of like a divine experience of like it's not your turn yet like mm. sit tight right so my cousin came i stayed in the country for another year i was struggling with so many things and i started to learn a bunch of crafts like i was doing my own clothing i was baking i was um learning how to paint i was just like trying to really focus my energy in learning things and trying to mm -hmm. figure out myself. So it was a time that I needed mm. uh, for myself. And then later on, I was like, okay, I have my passport now. I get to leave and I'm going now. So when I came, um, my aunt tells me, okay, uh, since you graduated, um, 
let's go to France. I was like, what? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, we'll go to France. Um, you know, that'll be my gift uh, to you. And, you know, <clears throat> we'll, we'll go and then we come back. But totally up to you. Um, because there was this, I mean, you always get um, a certain amount of time to come back inside. And then she was like, well, you know, if they give you like a short amount of time when you come back inside the country, I don't want to mess your plans, whatever. So totally up to you. We're going to Europe and then coming back. If that affects your time in the States, up to you. I was like, okay, no, I'm willing to take the chance I'm going. So we went to Europe, we went to France. It was also another incredible experience I had. And by the time we come back, my aunt tells me, okay, um, I think you should just try to make a life here in, in Florida. She lives in Florida. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, no, let me just see what's up there. Because my cousin was already here. Mm-hmm. So let me just see what's up there. If it doesn't work out, I come back. But I never told her. Now she's going to find out when she sees this. But I just never told her that I just didn't want her to take care of me. I sort mm. of wanted to just like, let me just go. And in my country, we have this saying of like, let me take all these hits yeah. from life kind of. Because I did want to go through that and see where the process was going to take me. Mm. And I ended up fine. Look. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But... Yeah, it was, I didn't want to tell her straight like that. And she, my aunt is an amazing person, but I didn't want to give her the responsibility to sort of, because it's family. Yeah. Whether she wants it or not, she's going to be taking care of me. Mm-hmm. I did some things that I wish I had help. I thought that I got this by myself and I made some mistakes along the way, but it ended up fine. And um I feel like, Again, just like in coffee, you got to make some mistakes and learn. Yeah. You know, you you always redirect. Oh. You always redirect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. that's how that's how I ended up in New York. I was like, let me just see what's up there and yeah. look at me. <laughs> I love that. I yeah. love that. I think that's one thing that I noticed about you is that you have a very go-getter and optimistic mindset has that like always been there it has always been there and i'm also very grateful i carry myself this way because it hasn't always been this easy yeah i i you know i've had a uh, certain times in my life where there was a lot of voids mm. um and i always thought there was a brighter day coming and whatever i had it was just like amazing i was like oh i have this little thing look it's so beautiful and i have it i'm so happy and now i have more things and they're still beautiful and i have them and it's like there's always this excitement about anything yeah that i accomplish or that i do i try to put my best energy into whatever i do this morning it's so funny because this morning um doing my you you've seen them we sell these turkey wraps yeah 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 so this morning was my very first time making these turkey wraps so i'm telling carol oh my god my first turkey wrap was like looking not so great and then the corners they broke and i was like oh my god this is a mess but i was telling carol don't worry i am going to get this watch Uh and then i made another one it looked better and then by the time I'm making like the fourth one, now it's looking really good. I'm like, Carol, look at this. And I'm <laughs> celebrating in the kitchen. Even even Louis comes in. I don't know if you've met Louis yet. Louis is another, it's a Venezuelan uh, friend of mine, very dear friend of mine too. And then he comes in the kitchen and I'm like, look, I made this, I made it. And we're all celebrating. And look, I feel like that's that makes your your the journey easy too yeah because if you're going to dwell on the first rap that you didn't get right it's like you're not going to try to accomplish the fourth rap that it's looking pretty good yeah. to me i don't know whoever yeah. ate that rap let me know <laughs> but yeah i feel like if you put the excitement into whatever you're doing mm-hmm. everything is such a joy and and there's always this motivation to keep going, to yeah. keep going, to keep going. Yeah. I feel like you live your life <coughs> every moment experiencing gratitude. I'm very grateful. Yeah, which I haven't seen like with a lot of people. And every day you or whenever you come visit the store, 
you have the same energy everyone's always excited to see you i'm just like wow like how do you do it i have my days i'm not going to lie i have my days i have my moments and the problem with me is that i feel really i usually feel very 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 high all the time i'm very positive i'm very energetic and when i feel low it really hits me sometimes but it's more I will get in this funks, but I'm. I always try to get rid of it, and always focus on what's actually working, what's actually going good. And I am so grateful because I've seen days, very great days, and I've seen really bright days. And there's always like a moment to see the rainbow. There's always like that. Okay, this is working. Whatever else is not, but this is working, and this is what I'm focusing on. So, and look, there's always things that you want uh, to work differently, right? Or yeah. there's always you want more or, oh, I wish this was this certain way. Mm-hmm. But I immediately t- try to redirect and I'm like, okay, but this I'm missing, but all these other ones, look, I didn't have this before. Mm. So it's, I think it's just a matter of focusing on whatever it's going right for you yeah yeah just shifting your mindset exactly Mm. yeah wow i love that i love that how's the coffee it tastes your coffee it's so good we got coffee from le cafe we have these cute little red cups i know the holiday edition yeah what are we drinking i got you a vanilla lot oh okay it's really good with whole milk okay Okay. okay, perfect (laughs) i think i know you yeah what, what are you drinking I'm drinking coffee with cream. Yeah, is my that regular. Your regular, that's yes. your go-to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And which is, do you feel that that's how you get like a lot of people come in for their black coffee or just coffee with a little bit of cream or milk? Do you feel that's how you get the best taste and the flavor of the coffee that you're drinking? No, no? I honestly, I just tell all of the customers because some customers are like. You know, people will bash you if you're like, oh, my God, you're having coffee with sugar and cream. Like, you're ruining it. It's yeah. like I always tell everyone, you have to enjoy your coffee. Mm-hmm. It's your mo- it's your morning moment. Yeah, Have your coffee the way you like to have your coffee. If mm-hmm. it's black, if it's with cream, if you want to put a bunch of uh, sweet new sweetener in it, yeah. just enjoy it. The cup of coffee, it's very individualistic. Yeah. You have to have it the way you like it then you can have a nice day yeah yeah Yeah. exactly it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you want to put on it because some people and look everyone has their own um their own preference Mm -hmm. let the other people have their own yeah 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 that's true so for like the everyday coffee goers i know there is a few that or quite a few people i feel that get their coffee every day they're spending ten dollars and now small coffee shops or cafes are asking for tips yeah. and so they're like okay on top of this ten dollar coffee i ha- they're also asking for tips like it's like why do i have to tip them they're just pouring coffee into a cup I or know. they feel that it's because the employers don't want to pay them enough and so now that they, they, they're getting the money from the consumers instead. So I was wondering what your take on that is. Look, I feel, of course, there's an impact in economy. Um, a lot of a lot of prices have risen up. So you as a business owner, and I always tell this to people, look, you have to also put yourself in your employer's shoes, mm-hmm. right? Because there's always like this hate speech immediately resurfacing like oh my boss he's mean or Mm -hmm. whatever the they are making the they're getting the cheese on the toast kind of Mm. and it's not i mean you as an as a business owner you have to make your business work and that's how you sustain your employee your employees and that's how you continue to operate Mm -hmm. so Yes, we have to increase prices just as everyone else has increases the prices of milk, the prices of the cups, the mm-hmm. prices of the services, whatever. We are also consumers of other companies mm-hmm. that we get things from. So I just, I feel like, look, it's a, it's a cycle and I feel like tipping your, your baristas is so uh, important. 
And people don't know how long it goes for us. Mm -hmm. It's such a gesture. And I always tell people, look, it doesn't have to be a dollar. Sometimes a dollar is tough. And sometimes, yeah, if I'm pouring a black coffee, I don't really push on the matter of tipping. But um, yeah, we got up really early this morning. Some of us got up at 4.30 in the morning and we came in the coffee shop to brew this hot coffee for you. Yeah, exactly. So yes, there is always an effort. Mm -hmm. My employer is paying me to be here at six in the morning, but... Yeah, there is this side of appreciation to your barista and to anyone that works in the in the customer service mm-hmm. that is, you know, giving you their best so you can have a nice day. Yeah. So I always tell people, just tip 25 cents, 50 cents. It doesn't have to be a lot. And some people, it's super nice. They don't tip on the daily, but they will come randomly and say, hey, this is for you guys. Yeah. It's such it's such a, um, a warm feeling yeah. and it really makes our day. It really impacts our pockets. Yeah. So I just, I feel like we always have to think, what if I work inside that bar? How would I feel? Mm -hmm. As I am also putting myself in my employer's shoes and say, okay, how do I continue running my business? I have to do it this way. So there's always a matter of perspective as instead of pointing fingers, it's more like, okay, let me just, how, what if it was me? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not as I heard this one thing that coffee is simple, but it can be very easily messed up in the sense that you can get a latte from so many different places, right? Okay, yeah. you get your espresso, you steam your milk, and then boom. Yeah. But to get a good latte, like, you have to really learn how to steam the milk, how long to aerate exactly. it, like, how how the foam is and the bubbles, and there's so much to it. And especially for us, at least at the location we work at, we are, like, nonstop working, you know, like, with no breaks. We're just on our feet, like, from morning until our shift ends. Yeah. And I always had respect for service workers, but, like, even if you can sympathize with them i don't think you can fully empathize with them until you are in their shoes yes and man it's exhausting and now whenever i go to get my coffee from somewhere if i go or to get my food or something like i just look at the person behind the counter so it's a direct reflection looking back at you now yeah exactly and i'm just like whoa like you know like there is no chance like I was I've I've never been like a rude person or can be rude to somebody like that but there I was like there's no chance I'm ever going to say anything you know and also for the people working behind the counter now I know why like in hospitality or in the service industry you need somebody who's energetic who's optimistic who is just like easygoing and fun because I have been purchasing something where the person on the other side is like so rude that you don't even want to I know. take that item right so like you get to see like both sides and so i realize how important it is for me to be at my best you know every single time somebody shows up so i feel like that's really important for like workers i feel that yeah we get tired we get exhausted but at the same time like these people are coming to us and not somewhere else, you know? Exactly. And look, I feel once you create that bond with the customer, especially if it's genuine and it's solid, they give you that room to just be yourself. And we have some days when we come to work and for whatever reason, we're not 100%. We're humans, right? Mm -hmm. But it's so important that relationship with your customer that he knows you and he's like what's what, what's wrong today yeah what's happening what are you thinking about you know and they even they sometimes become your therapist sometimes yeah. most of the time it's us being their therapist in a good way yeah but it's sometimes they you know it's always nice to have the customer take care of you and be like oh what's wrong and they know you they feel your energy yeah. so if the, the 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 bond is strong and that relationship is genuine, there is that 
the room to be yourself without ever being rude to the customer because the customer is not to blame yeah. of whatever is happening. A lot of the things, and look, it applies not only for the customer service, but every, even other jobs or other aspects in life, you take care of things where they need to be taken care of. It's mm -hmm. If it's an issue at home, you solve it at home. Mm -hmm. You don't bring things to other places. Just mm -hmm. these things, you have to take care of them, you know, privately or wherever they happen. No one else is to blame for whatever you're going through. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like you have experienced the same level of respect working behind the bar at like when a customer comes in, say, somebody who's working in corporate and they come in with their client or their co-workers and they're very like nice to them but do you feel like they express that same level of genuineness to you no, as well I have, I've had several experiences where and you know it's kind of funny actually because I've had even couples coming in and the guy is like oh so what do you want to drink how can I treat you la 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 and then the guy doesn't even say thank you to us. Of course, doesn't tip. Yeah. And it's okay, like whatever. But yeah. then he's trying to indulge this lady. And it's like, you know, this, there is a, this doesn't match. Yeah. You know, and a lot of how you carry yourself, how you treat the people that service you says a lot about you. Mm -hmm. Because if you are treating a stranger this way, a lot of whatever you're telling this beautiful lady, it's probably a lie. Mm -hmm. So you have to be consistent in your behavior to anyone. And I always tell that to people. I've had situations where uh, whoever is coming in and this person looks just like a very random, you know, wearing, sneakers and just very casual okay. very it doesn't point to anything and of course you shouldn't judge by appearances but it doesn't point on anyone being in a very corporate job or yeah. and then turns out it's like the owner of the building yeah and you don't know that yeah. and you have to treat everyone with the same kindness and the same respect as you would treat the one that looks like the owner of the building mm -hmm. and probably is a nobody. Yeah. Well, a nobody in the sense that maybe doesn't have that kind of uh, position. Yeah. So <clears throat> I always tell that to, it's one of the things I really put emphasis on when I'm training people. Mm -hmm. And these are core values. And it's sad because sometimes I have to really like, these are things that I was taught at home. You have yeah. to be respectful to everyone um you cannot judge people by how they look um you have to say good morning good afternoon please thank you these are just the basics and yeah. it's so important it's very very it, it speaks a lot about you mm -hmm. how you treat other people so i have had sadly going back to the main point i've had cases where you know there's some people coming in and they look very proper and they look um, um, very uh, prestigious, educated, educated yeah. very well-dressed, very, you know, and sadly their attitude doesn't match their mm -hmm. appearance. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I always give my best to everyone. Yeah. And I've had stories where it's like I had customers that will come in in the morning, especially in my COVID days, they will come in black coffee yeah and i will be like good morning how are you and sometimes they don't That's say anything fine. back okay i give them their change they leave next day black coffee hi how are you today okay no worries here you go yeah the third day i'm already waiting with the black coffee on the counter yeah and i remember saying to this particular customer hi good morning black coffee and he's like yes and i said okay here you go he's like is that for me? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's for you. <clears throat> and they sort of can't believe it. They're like, okay. And then the next day, or maybe a week after that, maybe two weeks after that, they're like, hi, Elizabeth. Good morning. How are yeah. you? Can I please get a black cup of coffee? Mm -hmm. Sure. It's already in the counter for you. 
you know? And I'm patient with them because they probably didn't get that before from anybody. So how are they able to give that to me? I am also teaching them how I would probably like to be treated. So yeah. it's a, it's a, it's just like building any other relationship, mm. you know? So it takes tender love and care and patience. A lot yeah. of times it requires patience. I'm not going to say I have all the patience in the world. Sometimes yeah. I, I can also snap. Yeah. If I, I am a very fair person and if mm -hmm. I see any injustice, it really gets to me. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I've had really rude customers and I will jump at anyone for my employees. Mm -hmm. um, I remember there was this particular case where um, this lady was talking very very rude to one of um one of the cashiers and um she really raised her voice and i flipped i think i was kind of far but i'm listening to the whole thing and i flipped and i said excuse me do not talk to her that way and then mm -hmm. the lady's like and i and she's like no no i'm not i'm not doing anything and i said no 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 i heard you yeah. I heard you and please lower your voice. She's just trying to be nice to you all because she kept on asking him if she would like a pastry with her coffee or something else with her coffee, but the lady had a mask. So she was saying no, but we couldn't hear her. Um, or in this particular case, the person couldn't hear her. And I said, I jumped right in. I said, hey, yeah, because <laughs> it's unfair. She's just trying to be nice to you. Okay. Yeah. So it um, it's just a, a matter of being patient with the customer and also you know taking care of things if they escalate of course you're not going to let people walk over you mm -hmm. being in management also has taught me to be more okay let me just simmer down a little bit my emotions and see how can I solve this without being immediately frustrated because yeah. I would get a little uptight and being in uh, in this position has has taught me a lot on how to, okay, let me treat this in a very diplomatic, civilized, way sometimes better. bureaucratic way, because yeah. sometimes I have to go through all this hoops. Yeah, that makes so. sense. And I feel like a lot of people that come that maybe don't talk to us or won't really respond, mm -hmm. right? I feel like <clears throat> they maybe, I mean, I'm making complete assumptions right now, but I feel like they feel that we are not doing anything important. We don't have the same status as them. I know. We, like, what are we doing? We're just making coffee. But they don't realize that we also have a life outside of this. A lot of us are pursuing something outside of it. I have a master's. Like, people that are working here are also going to school are educated and also are pursuing an art right? i love your touching on this yeah because this is such a look i feel so particular about this because a lot of people will assume that yeah look this is a you know barista job yeah whatever yeah it's whatever yeah. especially sometimes the people i have applying for the job they just think this is, oh, okay, clock in, clock out, clock in, clock out. Mm -hmm. No, I always tell, especially the people that I take on board and the people I see something in them. Mm -hmm. Look, this is something you, I, I mean, I've been doing it for enough time that I can already feel the vibe. And if I see something in you, I am going to really invest myself in you in the sense of you making something out of this. Mm -hmm. And I always tell everyone, this will be your stepping stone. And why? Because people see this as a, a just a meaningless job. Mm. And no, if you have the discipline to wake up every morning at the break of dawn, sometimes it's still dark. Sometimes you come into work, it's dark. Sometimes you leave at wor from work, it's dark. Mm -hmm. If you have the discipline to do that, if you have the uh, the teamwork, if you have the customer service to care for for the for the customers and create that bond with them if you have the sales and the marketing side of it mm -hmm. to network and you know upsell do all these things having a corporate job is going to be super easy for you mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But if you think this is a whatever job, then being in corporate is going to be really hard for you. Yeah. Because this is the core. This is where it's at. You succeed at this, you succeed at anything. Yeah. And I always tell that to people. I feel like you can make a career out of anything. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm a proof of that because I chose this craft and I made something out of it and maybe I will go lengths with this. So... It really, it's up to you and where you want to go. And I really, I, I feel like it's so unfair for people to just see whatever they see behind the bar as opposed to, hey, what you, how about you get to know us? Mm-hmm. And uh, going back to the previous, the previous questions, it's like, don't judge people just for the way they look. Yeah. Because... There is a lot, and and I feel like we have so much talent in the company. Mm -hmm. We have artists. We have this beautiful girl and her podcast. We have um, content creators. We Mm -hmm. have, um, there's a guy that does um, jujitsu and martial arts. And I feel like there's something so special about every single one of us. Mm -hmm. And if people take the time to get to know that, it's like, oh, wow, I never expected this. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I agree. Well, I have a short little, I brewed up a short little coffee trivia okay. question <laughs> thing. I didn't know you went to coffee school. I mean, I'm sure you already knew all the answers anyways because you work in it. But I'm now, nervous. Now I'm like, oh Maybe my gosh, I forgot. you went to coffee <laughs> school. But, okay, they're like all mainly little true or false questions. So okay. I'll give you like... 10 seconds. Shui, how could you do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Okay. Okay. So we'll start off easy. Okay. True or false? Coffee is a bean. True. True? Yes. Isn't it? Okay. Isn't I mean, it? it's it's a it's a tree. Yes. I mean, it's a fruit, actually. Right. But it, it does. It has the shape of a bean. It's actually a fruit, mm-hmm. and then you take what it's inside of the fruit. So I thought th- the inside was a seed. Is it not of the fruit? Like it's a coffee tree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. a, it's actually a tree. So it's a fruit, and then what's inside? It's the. I guess this is seed, but it looks like a bean. Okay. But it's actually a fruit. Mm-hmm. You take that out, and then what you have inside? It's actually green. Mm-hmm. And then after the roasting process, it becomes brown depending on the roast uh, level that you want it to be. Mm, okay, okay, got it. Okay, cool. All right, first <laughs> question, good job. I save that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, true or false? Decaf coffee is completely caffeine free. False. I, 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 it's so funny because people come, can I have a decaf? It still has caffeine, people. It still has caffeine. Yeah, is it because it's hard to completely take out? Is it less caffeine? But it's, it's hard- less caffeine, okay. but it definitely still has traces of it. Mm. Um, and I would say it's a really, it's a um, a very like ca- um, complex process. I mm-hmm. would say just have your regular cup of coffee. Just do one shot instead of two. Mm. Yeah, okay. do something lighter. But you know, it's like having skim milk or. It's like the, the the process of like taking the fat out of the milk. It's like such a treated. It's a very processed oh. uh, result what you get. So just have the regular stuff and just have less of it. That's uh, all. Okay. Okay. Wow. I didn't know that. Okay. So next question. True or false? The drink uh, Cafe Americano actually originated in Europe. It did. I think it's related to the war. Yes. Yeah, because um, everyone wanted to have like watered down coffee, so everyone they, from America went there. Yes, and they, they wanted, wanted they wanted to have like the drip coffee, and they're like coffee americano because they put water in the espresso. Yeah. So okay, I did that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good job, good job. Okay, true or false? Coffee is a good source of fiber. I don't think so because you are taking only the oil out of the seed bean. So um, I don't want to say it's a good source of fiber. I think the extraction process just gives you the oil from the inside and then mm. you're not really using the, the fiber from the coffee. Mm. 
mm. that it's a residue, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Apparently, it is true. So oh. a cup of coffee can have up to two grams of fiber, and a cup of spinach and a cup of broccoli also has like two How? grams of because fiber. Because I thought fiber was what... That's when they say eat fiber because you're eating like the pulp of things. And yeah, like the, yeah. I don't know. So that's why I guess, you know, a lot of times... I have to investigate this. Yeah, you know how people are like, they drink coffee and they're like, ah, I have to go to the bathroom, you oh, know? And that's so why? Like, yeah, and so I, a lot of times I think people think it's maybe just because of the milk or they're like lactose, but it's actually because of the coffee and it can act as another source of fiber and vegetable like obviously don't use that as your source of fiber but it actually has <laughs> equivalent amounts of fiber as some vegetables okay apparently. that's a new one to me yeah. for me okay so true or false the beautiful aroma of caffeine tends to attract bugs <sighs> i don't know i don't think so yeah I don't think so. Is it's it true? False. Okay, it's I false. don't think so. I actually feel like coffee, or for what I know, it's like um, sometimes using some products that actually repels them. Yes. Okay, so does. yeah, I know lavender and coffee would, I think, will take them away, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. lavender, it's a good... Um, Insect so they, repellent? Yeah, lavender oil, it's good for like mosquitoes to just... Oh. Um, go away it's like oh. repellent yeah 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 apparently, natural repellent apparently scientists think that like plants produce caffeine because it like repels insects and so like if you have coffee in your home and stuff usually bugs and insects don't like the smell of it so you won't have like mosquitoes oh, okay. and stuff i yeah. also don't think that the i mean i don't know i could be wrong but i think the 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 final result of coffee smells very different than the plant So what these yeah. two aromas that actually some people it's like, I really love how coffee smells, but not how it tastes because there's these two different things mm -hmm. and I, I can see that. And probably the plant smells different. Yeah. I want to say maybe it smells more like chocolatey. I don't know. Mm, Could okay. be me. <laughs> okay. Wow. And last one, true or false? A cup of coffee has more antioxidants than a cup of blueberries. I believe so. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Coffee, it's great for, and I always upsell coffee like that. So people can leave me alone and let me drink my cup of coffee. But I think <laughs> coffee is actually great for you. Yeah. It's great for your brain. It's great for your body. Um, of course, if you abuse it, like everything else is going to, um, you know, do some damage in the long run. But I feel like if you enjoy your cup of coffee daily and... You don't do a lot of additives to it. I actually think it impacts you good. Yeah. It, yeah, especially I feel like there's a lot of activity between the coffee and the brain. Mm -hmm. So, I, look, I don't drink coffee to wake up. It's more like, okay, I'm awake and I want to enjoy my cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. I don't really need it to, like, pick me up. Mm -hmm. um, but I do feel like there's a lot of activity with the brain and the body. So I feel like it's... It's healthy if you treat it like such. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Okay. And lastly, if there was one last thing that you could leave me or everyone listening, what would that message be? I think um, as per my journey, mm -hmm. just really um, work hard. I feel like the pay, it's much, much greater than the immediate um, reward. Mm. A lot of people want things to just, um, you know, appear immediately for mm -hmm. them. There is no, like, patience in the process. And look, we don't have all the answers. A lot of this is like, let me just, you know... Let me just keep going and see what happens. A lot of this is just learning on the daily and you, oh my God, I didn't know how to do this. And you just, you have to love the process as much as you are invested in your final goal mm -hmm. because the process teaches you everything that you need to get there. So yeah. I feel like 
there is this culture now that we want everything to just be immediate, immediate. It's like this immediate gratification. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of the hard work and investment and loyalty has faded away. Mm. And I just, look, just work hard for what you want. A lot of things just come back to you and they come back to you two, three, four times bigger than what you expected just because you are yourself yeah. and, be and because you're invested and because you do it with your heart. I always tell people the reward does not come from other people. It comes from God. Mm -hmm. So whenever this customer didn't tip me, it's fine. Mm -hmm. This customer was mean to me, it's fine. I always tell um, people don't, get caught up in that because then you feel like you're re you feel resented oh this customer didn't give me the appreciation this person didn't give me the the praise no just keep going mm -hmm. there's gonna be one customer that's gonna come in and we'll tip you a hundred dollars if we've had that yeah we've had that we in the company that, yeah. and i want to say it's um more times that that you would think so there's always it's always going to come back to you. If you do good, it's coming back to you. It's coming back to you two, three, four times bigger than what you expected. Just keep going. Yeah. Just go with it. And for you personally, is there something that you're looking forward to in this new quarter of life that you've been in? Is there any dreams or just anything that you were excited and looking forward to? Yes. Um, and I'm very honest with... Um, with everyone about this i feel like eventually i i can just do my own mm -hmm. um i don't know when that's going to be i always feel like oh there's something else i want to learn there's something else i want to learn there's something else i want to learn and look there's always this fear of failure mm -hmm. right and by the same token i'm really invested in what i'm doing right now with this particular company um i i really just and I have this attachment to these stores that I have seen grow, that I have opened myself, that I have worked there myself. So I am really emotionally and, um, uh, and you know, uh, professionally invested in this company. So, but there's going to be the day where I'm like, okay, I'm just going to jump in another pool and this time it will be just me figuring it out, right? And, I I feel like it's been I oh I was talking to my mom and I told her like this feels like it, these past two years have felt like this is the best time of my life and yeah. I'm learning so much I'm doing so much and I feel like some some days are a challenge but it's just like a good one it's like I'm yeah. thriving in this um in this new this new things I'm learning and this new position and. I'm just very, very grateful and just, I, I want to do more. I want to do more. I want to do more. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> and I know you're going to be so successful at uh, whatever you do because, yeah, you just have that energy. Thank you, Shrey. Yes. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you guys so much for joining this episode. If this is your first time listening, I'm Shweta Lumba and this is Ellie Rico and I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new and something fun and I just want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity thank to you for work inviting with me you. yes of course and I'm so glad it's crazy I never would have thought that like working here would lead me to doing this podcast and it's just crazy the way that people come together and the way that the universe I aligns i love everything. that me too and i want to give a quick little shout out to my beautiful co-workers cj crystal and irene ate because you guys have taught me everything i know <laughs> and made this place feel you like got the home. best team i know you I got did. the best team i did I got other so teams lucky. don't feel jelly <laughs> <laughs> i know the best team the best location and honestly it's been such a ride and if anyone feels like you want to go try something new out like i hope after listening to this you decide to do it no matter how small or big it seems or how ig insignificant but if it's important for you to learn then then do it because when else are you gonna do it you know? i know show your baristas love we yeah. really 
we are here for you. We're trying to make your day. And it feels so nice when we get that back from you. And look, uh, support your, I know a lot of these companies also have coffee in their offices, but it's always so nice to, hey, just go, uh, go downstairs or go outside, get a cup of coffee, connect with us. Yeah. And we really enjoy the conversation. I feel like it's a lot of these customers are the highlights of my day. Like mm -hmm. I genuinely want to see them. Yeah. I genuinely want that connection. And I I really wouldn't trade that um, that moment of like sharing on the day for just like, okay, let me just go. In my particular case, let me just go and sit in an office, talk to my computer. No, yeah. Yeah, I love exactly. working in the service industry because I love that community. I love yeah. the connection. Yeah, there's so much beauty in it that... I think people just dismiss. They don't they don't see it unless you immerse yourself into it. And you guys have shown me that. And I think it's really important to go support your local coffee shops and, you know, these small little cute cafes. They put in so much work and so much effort to give you the best possible cup of coffee that you're drinking like we and the best possible day because this is day. the start of your day exactly if it goes well your day's gonna go really really great exactly exactly well, oh yeah. thank you love for you. this yeah I of course i hope you had fun i had the best time thank you so yeah. much